Ja, tato de fano. A ko Katarina ho no Austria aho. Aro hanui kite mana fenoa. Kia ora tato. So my name is Katarina and I'm from Austria, which is you can actually if you take your right hand and you reach through the globe, like all the way through straight, you can touch Austria. <laughs> it's a little patch of land in the in the heart of Central Europe. And um I grew up in the city of Vienna. In a time that is the longest was the longest peace period in history that place. And within one of the biggest peace projects of history, the European Union. An incredibly fortunate time. So that's me as a little girl. My grandparents taught me to walk my path. I had access to education, to safety, to community, to music, to nature, to everything a little girl could ever imagine. My grandparents taught me to be courageous, to to be to love, to be kind and tolerant and open-hearted. So I carry a lot of that in the center of my heart. At the same time, my grandparents were teenagers when my culture committed the biggest genocide in history. And when the death machines of the Holocaust killed six million Jews. Hitler was Austrian. And so my grandparents were never able to speak about it. They passed in silence. And what I, what I know is that they were torn apart by the trauma of having been civil society at war and feeling victimized and traumatized, and at the same time they were guilty and the nation of the perpetrators. So all so that made things unspeakable and the guilt, the pain and the trauma simmered into silence and continued to simmer under under the surface of my society for a long time. I would have wanted to ask my grandparents, what did you know? What did you believe? What did you do? And I'm left with the question, what would I have done? And that's a question that has accompanied me throughout my entire life. What would I have done? And how can I come to a point with my humanity that if something like this happens again, I will show up? So I became an entrepreneur, um, founded organizations that usually around equal opportunities, bringing diverse voices into public discourse, um, studied law and diplomacy, um, I uh, was a ballroom dance teacher, was in tourism, I traveled the world. Um, eventually, the social business I created taught teenagers to sustainably handle money and get, not get themselves um, entrapped into debt spirals. And for a long time, what I did was, um, I, so I gained access to really privileged stages like the World Economic Forum. I got recognition by the OECD. And a long time, for a long time, I did the young white person tells the world how system change works kind of thing, <laughs> and until it burned me out. And that was two years ago. And something deep inside me called me and said, stop, step back, listen, and reconnect. And so I asked myself the deeper questions. Uh, is what I'm doing actually impacting the world? Am I increasing my humanity? Am I using my privilege and my heritage to an extent that actually serves and I realized that a lot of what I've done in my entrepreneurial life, with the intent that I had, the good intent, like the systems that I used and the tools that I used to create those businesses and create those teams and those structures, I learned from the system I wanted to change. So for, 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 a, for a moment that left me wondering what to do. <laughs> and um, so I dropped everything my job, my relationship, my life, and started to travel for a couple of months and sat by myself in the Australian outback for a couple of days and deeply reconnected with nature, with my grandmothers, um, and with a sense of also understanding that the system I wanted to change was the one that evaluated my business and my doing and measured me and financed me. And part of what made it so difficult and part of what burned me out was that it was difficult to circumnavigate that. 
In 2017, I spent 10 weeks in Silicon Valley at a, at a crazy summer program that, that gave me a deep dive into exponential technology and how we could use these technologies for climate change. And I came, about, came across these post-its every day, and the top left one caught my eye. We will become very powerful, but will we be good? And I challenged that. I think the question should be, we are very powerful, but are we good? And so really, that's a question that's not maybe not new, but usually we speak about it and then we go on. Um, tools and technologies are really powerful, and they, they are really just tools, and they can be used in this or that way. Hitler thought that what he was doing was inherently good, and he used powerful tools like community building, belonging, songs, rituals, the story, the narrative of we the people, we the good ones. Not inherently bad tools, but it's really a question of you know, what basis do you apply them from. And the same is true for exponential technologies, for anything we do in our actions and in, in our lives. So I wonder, what do I do to align my inner compass with that basic good that is in partnership with life? and with all life. Where do I learn that? When in my life do I learn that? And what do I do to do that? What can I offer young people to actually learn that and to have that compass inside of them? So I'm here in Aotearoa, New Zealand, with, an in, with, a, with a deep entrepreneurial journey, with a deep spiritual journey, and with an intense curiosity to learn from the Maori culture and to listen. To dive to that these are the questions I'm holding, these are the questions I'm coming with. And also an intense curiosity to create. And I was welcomed by the Taranaki Fanui in during our welcome week with the words, You're so welcome here. Come and respect our culture first, listen, learn, and then also bring your richness, bring your culture, and infuse it into what you who you are here and what you're doing here. Now that's something that I wish that my culture would say to immigrants coming in. And right now what I see back home is historic, historically patterns repeating. Right-wing politics on the rise, the fear of the other being stronger than ever in society, and hardened immigration policies. So, second reason I'm here is because I'm here on a global impact visa. So the New Zealand government is being really creative about how to, how to forge positive approaches to immigration and welcome people. And I feel so welcome here. So whoever represents government in this room, thank you for welcoming me with open arms. Te ati awa taranaki whanui. Tēnā koutou. Tēnā koutou. Tēnā koutou. Katoa.